Hello and welcome to the show and welcome to a new car build series as I'm going to be tackling the Needles Pass on Fortune Island with a variety of cars built to A class. Of course, this does mean we need a benchmark vehicle and for that I'm using the BMW M4. This starts out at the top of A class. In fact, it's actually, I think, one of the highest PI an A class car can be, seeing as in my garage it still goes to the top of A class despite all my modified cars. <laughs> I've built this uh, brief time trial. A little bit fiddly to get a time trial thing going on here. I have to kind of start somewhere down there on a cross country route. And due to the AI shenanigans, we're going to be starting at two minutes. We'll take two minutes off the final time. It is just the best way to get a time trial style event working on a slightly unusual. Let's say it's like an unusual position because, you know, rivals mode and whatnot doesn't work properly. So there we go. Uh, we are going to be off and underway. Now, we have been using this course before. I did a stream running hill climbs in the video yesterday uh, with some A-class cars actually uh, tackling this stake. It is a good, fun place to be doing some hill climb. And it's very, very challenging. It's different challenging to a lot of... Uh, it's sort of the normal stuff. This M4, I'm expecting to probably not be all that fast. Admittedly, uh, track rec record-wise, our benchmark cars have not tended to do amazingly well. But I mean, this has got a few things against it. While it is decently powerful at 430 horsepower, just over 400 torque as well, it is heavy, and we are going to be seeing light cars. Light cars are going to be, I think, the way to go up here at uh, 3,400 pounds-ish, I think this is, and yeah, that's not necessarily what you want from the vehicles. Uh, also, race tyres, I think, are going to be quite important. You're going to have race tyres on your car. Well, not everything is going to get away with race tyres in A-Class. Uh, race tyres, if you can get them, will probably be very, very helpful. And the reason why you picked A-Class for this is it's a lot more challenging to build. S1 class, you can just about get everything you want on the car. It's how much power you get in it that's the difference. In A-Class, it's a lot tougher. In A-Class, it's a lot more difficult to get all the bits that you want. For an opening run from this, what are we going to see from the M4 as we head around the final corner? Accelerates towards the line. That looked like a 135. There's a lot of weird ghosty AI cars across the finish line. 135.5 uh, as our first, our first time. No idea if that's good, but we will give it another run. So, we move on to our second run with the BMW. It's, well, I guess we're probably going to be looking at can anything get under sub 130. Uh, that's perhaps, that's going to be a fun target. I'm sure something's going to blow that away quite quickly. Uh, the M4, actually not terrible up here. It is a bit big and, a, well, say, it feels a little bit heavy uh, compared to some cars I have driven up here. Uh, but it isn't actually doing too bad around these corners. Uh, one thing you don't want your cars to be doing is oversteering in this hill climb, and we will probably see a lot of cars being quite unspectacular and understeery in places, um, just because that is a little bit faster, rather than slipping and sliding the way around. I don't really want to be wasting time with uh, sliding like that. For example, uh, a <laughs> case in point, uh, the cars that run in this series uh, are going to be left with their standard drive lines. There's going to be no drive line swapping whatsoever, so rear-wheel drive cars will stay rear-wheel drive, front-wheel drive, etc. Uh, being a tarmac event, uh, we are likely to see a lot more uh, balance going on around here. It's dry as well, so there'll be no all-wheel drive advantage uh, with the weather playing any factors. I've butchered up that corner a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to see... We could well see front-wheel drive cars running very quickly up here. Uh, in fact, if anything, all-wheel drive may be at a slight disadvantage in terms of the PI. All-wheel drive tends to dump the PI up a little bit higher, and while the all-wheel drive traction is great for some stuff, up here, out of these corners, considering a lot of cars will be on race tyres and will be uh, putting their power down, no issues. I don't think we're going to see uh, all-wheel drive domination. Not to say all-wheel drive cars won't be fast, but I don't think it's going to be dominated by them. I think small and light, whatever it may be, is potentially the way to go, as long as it's controllable. Uh, this has not been a great run for the M4. A little bit too much in the way of oversteer from me in some places. Actually, a very, very similar time in all of that. It was another... A 135, a 1. Yeah, too much slipping and sliding around for the BMW. Our final run, we're going to have to try and be neater. 
Right, we are on to the final run with our BMW. Each vehicle is going to get three attempts up this course. I am hoping we can find a little bit of time. I'm hoping we can find a little bit of time in this car. Less oversteer, I think, is going to be important. Of course, I want to be getting on the power out of these hairpins as quickly as possible, but less uh, oversteer is going to be a pretty important thing if we can manage that. The AI managed to make a mess of the crash barrier through turn one. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, if we can just be a little bit smoother into some of these hairpins, we might get a little bit of time. I don't think we're going to be going all that much faster. A sub-130 with this car is not going to be happening, unfortunately. I have not got that much speed in me to, 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 to make it go that sort of pace up the hill. Uh, we'll get away with a little bit. We're kind of sliding a little bit through there. I don't think we've lost all that much time. Uh, we're a little bit wonky through here. In fact, a little bit too much understeer. Uh, we kind of fast through one corner, but you end up out of position for the next corner. It's a tricky, it's a tricky stage. It is a tricky stage up here. And I'm going to be trying to at least keep two wheels on the road at all times. No cheeky shortcuts uh, from me. We are out very wide there, but my plan is we can. Yeah, there we go. Try and get a nice exit out the other side. Don't really want to be quite brushing the Armco if we can help it, but I don't think we lost all of that much there. Uh, yeah, some of these corners uh, you can either absolutely fly into or you can focus on trying to get a good exit out of. Uh, there's some sort of tightening corners. It's, it's generally just a nasty piece of tarmac to have to deal with in a car. Uh, as I said, the M4 is more fun up here and doing a bit better up here than I perhaps expected it to. I don't think the time is going to be uh, the... the sit at the top for all that long, but it could be a lot worse to drive here as we head out of the final corner. Let's not get the car excited into oversteering. It's a better run. Better run for the BMW. We made second or so on that one. It is a 133.605. That will be the initial benchmark. A completely stock BMW M4 has, uh, has gone. I guess it's time to build some cars and see how they fare. So the first vehicle to be built for this hill climb stage is going to be the Mazda RX-8 that we won from a wheel spin at the end of the uh, last Beach Rally video. And this immediately throws up some difficulties with how we go about building the car. Because it starts off as a mid-ish PI B-class car. We have got room for some upgrades, but not the largest amount of room. The question is, what on earth do we do with tyres? Cars are going to keep their standard engines, unless they can't get to the top of A-Class. I don't think there are going to be many that can't get to the top of A-Class with their standard engines. But if they can't, then we might swap them. Otherwise, they will be left with their standard ones. Uh, we are probably going to run Forza Aero. That is a mighty impressive splitter you've got on the front there. We are probably going to be running Forza Aero on just about everything. There's no real disadvantage to it. Okay, it increases the PI by a little tiny bit. Uh, however, it is going to be giving us a lot of grip, potentially. Okay, we're not going fast. That is true, but anything helps. The downside side, lack of top speed, is irrelevant. We're going up a bit. There's no top speed in the car, so it's kind of worth going for it. Um, as I said, the tyres are the tough thing. What do we do with them? Do we go race tyres? The grip they give is immense. We know this. And on the most part, technical stuff, race tyres are a very good idea. There is actually quite a big PI jump with this uh, with this RX-8. Oh, I mean, we could go rally tyre. <laughs> rally tyres are rally tyres are a strange thing. Uh, they are better than sport tyres for whatever reason. Uh, yeah, they're the second best rose tyre technically. I think I think I've got to go race tyres. From from what I've experienced with this hill climb, grip is so so massively important that uh, race tyres and from what I've seen in Forza in general. Uh, race tyres are the way to to go when we have the PI to do it. We will potentially be a little bit underpowered in this car. We might get away with it by, well, saving some weight. I mean, 232 horsepower is not bad. However, yeah, it, I, I would like a bit more. We are going to go for a full roll cage on just about everything. The extra chassis rigidity is going to be worth it when we're on such a technical uh, stage. The weight reduction can get us down to 2,600. Which I'm, prob I'm probably going to want to do. I'm de as I probably am definitely going to want to do. Let's throw in a diff. Now, uh, gearbox. Ah, perfect. We can get... 
we can get uh, an upgraded gearbox and save some PI. That that sounds good to me. Uh, all of the vehicles are going to be run with standard tunes, uh, simply to try and keep things fair between them. Uh, my tuning ability isn't the best, and some cars might, if I start faffing around with them, some cars might end up getting advantages here and there. So to keep it fair, they're going to be run with, uh, with standard tunes, and everything is going to be run with their standard wheels. Again, modern lightweight wheels look dopey on classic cars, so to keep everything balanced, we will be running everything uh, as they come. Uh, I'm trying to get engine upgrades that save us some weight if I can. If we can save some weight with engine upgrades, that seems like a good idea. We're going to be just shy of 300 horsepower in this. Decent enough rear tyres on here. Pretty decent rear tyres on the RX-8. Oh, we're going to be a, going to be a pain, aren't you? None of these are going to be able to give us the PI <laughs> we want. Nope, and that gives us weight, which we don't want particularly. I guess it's only... Mm, uh, it's nine horsepower. Ooh, is that worth it? Possibly. <laughs> I think so. For three, for three pounds, nine horsepower is worth it. Uh, not going to get a flywheel on the car. Are we going to get things like a drive line? Sometimes, exactly. That's why I check. Sometimes you can sneak them on. In fact, that's got the weight. So we've got the. <laughs> We got the horsepower and then got the weight actually lighter than it was before we put the horsepower in. So, 302 horsepower, 207 torque in the RX-8, uh, 2,500 pounds. It's an interesting prospect. I think it's going to be pretty good. I think it's going to be pretty good up the mountain. I think the race tyres are the way to go, but I guess we will find out shortly. Right, we are on the start line with our mighty diffuser. A splitter, in fact, sorry, on the Master RX-8. Ready to take on the hill climb stage. I'm hoping for plenty of grip through the corners. Hopefully we can carry enough momentum. We are going to be a little bit down on power, perhaps, to accelerate out to the other side. We will have to wait and see how this one all pans out. I'm not really sure. I'm expecting the RX-8 to be faster than the M4. That much is for sure. I don't know how much faster, though. Simply the race tyres on this are... Uh, I mean, you can, I can visibly see driving, you can visibly feel how much more grip this has got through these, through these corners. In fact, it's quite easy to turn in almost too much for some of these turns and end up in a slightly wonky position. Uh, how much grip I've suddenly got. Oh, although I say that, we get a bit of oversteer. Uh, almost one the wide. Still a 300 horsepower rear wheel drive car. Ultimately, and as good as race tyres are, you're still going to be working at low speeds coming out of hairpins. Easy to spin the rear wheels. Of course, being a road sweep, I'm trying to keep the uh, revs up coming out of these out of these turns. Uh, go, come on, turn in, master. There we go. Nicely does it. Uh, up through our next few corners. We should be flat out through here, no problem, with the Mazda. Uh, now we've got the nasty... This is an in, Again, this is an interesting corner. Do you throw it in? Do we go for quite a late apex? Try and get a good run out of it? Do you try and carry a lot of speed on the way in? Uh, it's, you can see on the map it's a strange little hairpin. Uh, I think we've got... I think I'm better off focusing on the exit of the corner, especially in perhaps some of these cars that don't have as much acceleration to get away with uh, trying to jump on the power on the exit of corners. Uh, this is looking pretty fast for the uh, RX-8 as we climb up towards the final corner. It is go <laughs> it's going to obliterate the BMW. <laughs> 128. 128.8 on the first run from the RX-8, and I think there is more to come from that uh, as well. There were little mistakes, little uh, oversteer moments and so on. Yeah, well, we're already under the 130s up here. Well, it was a good first performance, I think, from the RX-8 here. Plenty of grip in, in some ways, more, more grip than I was expecting. Caught me out in a couple of places. So I'm hoping for an even better run this time if we can keep it on the tarmac. No sliding around from the car at all. If possible, it can almost... <laughs> It's almost sort of where we're starting there. You don't really have time to fully accelerate towards the head, but you can almost go flat through the whole way. You don't have a little bit of a lift through there. Now, we'll try and not jump across the grass down here too much. Uh, yeah, I mean, this has got... It's kind of got everything you want from a car. It's got just enough... Well, it's just enough power. It's on the verge of spinning the wheels if you boot it out of the corners, but there is just enough grip to deal with the power that we have. I'm suspecting we might see even lighter cars being the way to go, because ultimately, yeah, they're having less weight to try and throw around the corners is going to be helpful out here. 
go for that. Uh, again, slightly, slightly laser rate, but it's, just, it's all about, I think, getting the speed out of the corners where we can with these less accelerating cars. I'm sure there'll be cars with more power than this uh, run up the course that can get away. I mean, the power cars are going to have the advantage simply accelerating up the hills. It's Well, it's not as steep as perhaps I would ideally like it to be here. Certainly if I was thinking of like soapbox racing, it is still, you know, a steep hill. And when you've got the power to climb it, that is going to be a potential advantage for some cars. Whereas this thing is going to be all about keeping the speed up, keeping the momentum. It is not a better run that time around. It is still, <laughs> it's still under a 130. That time a 129.1. Okay, I thought I thought that was a better run. It felt like a better run from the RX-8. Uh, didn't quite happen. Well, it is the last chance for the RX-8 to go any faster. I mean, I'd kind of like a 127, just because I want to <laughs> just want to just want to push that benchmark, that target time a little bit further down the road. Uh, it might be doable if I can get everything right in this car. Uh, that last run felt very good, but uh, obviously we lost a little bit of time somewhere along the way. Oh, I was... <laughs> Some of these corners, I'm kind of turning in, and I could probably have got away with actually being a little faster on the exit there. However, uh, I just chickened out because I wasn't really sure if I was quite going to make the uh, corner. Oh, that's bad. I don't think I wanted to be spinning the wheels. Again, we're, we're, we're creating smoke. We're spinning the wheels slightly, but I don't know if it was enough to really lose all that much time just about keep it all together through there that was very close to giving myself some trouble oh might be a little bit wonky might be a little bit too close to the inside through there although we keep it we can keep it together kind of make that into one corner through that part which is nice there we go that's again i'm happy with that in the, in the rx8 it's not and again we're going to probably see this the fastest cars are not going to be visually spectacular the slow cars they'll probably be visually spectacular the fastest cars up here are just going to be glued to the road um, maybe even a teetsy bit on the understeery side that is definitely the faster way to go up here i would expect the general way i like to drive my cars anyway but uh, yeah on this sort of course that is probably going to be the quicker quicker way i'm a little wide on the exit there i'll get my power nice and early so i do it didn't lose too much time on the gravel is basically what I wanted to do through there, which I think we managed to achieve. It's going to be... Oh, so close. <laughs> so close. I didn't quite get the 27 I was after. It is a 128.133 from the RX-8. Pretty consistent runs. In fact, pretty consistent runs from both cars in all of this, which is, I guess, good to see in... Uh, in this, I can apparently be vaguely consistent running up the hill. Uh... I mean, the RX-8 is good. The RX-8 is good. Uh, lots and lots of grip through the corners. More than enough grip to out outdo the BMW. Yeah, the BMW had more power, would probably be faster accelerating, and higher top speed. Top speed is useless on, on the mountain, and this can actually use its 300 horsepower much better than the 430 in the BMW. There's a light, it's a lot lighter, this car, so we can get around the corners and maintain momentum where the BMW couldn't. Although, who knows what we are going to see. Well, who knows what we're going to see next, because that is up to you guys. Uh, leave your requests, suggestions in the comment section. The most liked car provided. I, A, have it, or can acquire it, or B, uh, and, and B, it fits within the class restrictions. A class is a little more restrictive on vehicles. Some cars uh, will start way too high a PI. Um, yeah, we'll have a run with stuff, and we'll see... What can compete with the RX-8? I feel like this is a good, this was a good build, it was a good car. I don't think it's completely unstoppable up the hill climb, but you never know. Maybe we've built an amazing car, first of all. Well, yeah, we'll see. That, though, is going to be it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, a goodbye.